Hi, this is Simon Armstrong, and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion 5. Now, one of my most popular tutorials is called Rain on Glass, and it looks at a displacement technique for creating water droplets on a glass surface. I want to revisit that idea and give you a bit more background as to how it actually works, because some of you have been a little bit confused. So let's start with some theory. I'm going to create a few objects here using the rectangle tool, just create a few objects inside that group. Now I want us to consider what the actual size of this group is. Now we would think it's the window of our project, so our project size is 1920 1080. So we would think that this group is actually 1920 1080. But if we turn on our overlays, uh, so uh, show overlays, you'll see that there's a bounding box that goes around all the objects in our group. And this is the actual size of the group. So this is very important to remember. So it's whatever objects we have inside are going to determine the size of the group. So what if we wanted that group to be the full size of the frame. Well, there's two things we could do, one of which is we could add a color solid, put it to the back, uh, and now you'll see that the group has, oops, sorry, put it right at the back, there you go, you'll see that the group as a whole has taken on the size of that color solid. If I reduce the color solid, you'll see that the group size again changes depending on the overall set of objects within the group. Now there is a way of making, of forcing the group to be a particular size, and that is the fixed resolution option. So we can turn that on here in the group properties like that, and you'll see that now our bounding box occupies the full frame, and that's what this fixed resolution does. Now by default, it takes on the project dimensions, but it doesn't have to. We could, for example, make it square. And then our group size is 1080 by 1080. And you'll notice that anything outside that has disappeared. So one other thing I want to show you is I'm going to turn off fixed resolution. I want to show you what happens if we create an emitter. So I'm going to, so I've selected one of those rectangles. I've hit E to make an emitter. And now we've got this emitter here. I'm just going to increase the speed to send it off a bit more, like that. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it looks like, just reduce the scale. So now again, I want you to look at the bounding box for the group. So initially, it's being defined by our color solid at the back, but watch what happens as the particles hit the edge of the frame. So come to the group itself, and you'll see that the bounding box is increasing in size as those particles go beyond the edge of the frame. So we've got a, we've effectively got a group that is actually changing in size over time because of this emitter. So again, if we turn on fixed resolution, you'll see that we get around that problem and that layer stays fixed at the size we choose. So let's again make it square, and you'll see that that just stays fixed. Okay, so what is the fixed resolution doing? You'll notice there's a little R next to the name there when we turn it on, and that R is for a rasterize. So what, is, what does rasterize mean? Well, I want to show you another consequence of using fixed resolution. And to do that, I'm going to type a piece of text, rasterize, make it fairly small. Let's turn off everything else in the group because we don't need to see that. So our group is not fixed resolution at this point. Let's use the properties to scale it up. Okay, so there we are. There's rasterize full size. And I think you can see that the text has stayed nice and sharp. Now, I want you to see what happens if I turn on fixed resolution. So turn on that button and you can see now very clearly, I think, that the text is pretty ragged. 
So it's as if we've taken a 1920 image and we've blown it up by 600%. And that's why we're getting this nasty aliasing on the text and it's all gone soft and horrible. And that's because we've made a fixed resolution object and we've blown it up. And it's exactly the same as if we'd rendered out that layer and brought it back in again and scaled it up. We haven't got that resolution that allows us to do this. So I hope that's explained the overall concept of fixed resolution, and I'll come on to why I needed to do that explanation a little bit later on. OK, so let's apply what we've just learned uh, to animating this poster artwork. I'm going to create some bubbles that bubble up through this text and displace it and make it look like water bubbling up from a spring. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new group. Uh, you can do that from here, new group, command shift N if you prefer. And we're going to select the Bezier tool and we're going to create a little droplet. So I'm going to zoom right in to create the droplet because we want it to be pretty small. So I'm going to click up here then I'm going to click and drag down there, click and drag down there and close it up. So we've got a droplet more or less like that. Let's call this droplet. Let's zoom out. And now we want to turn this into an emitter. So what we're going to do is come to Object, Make Particles. Let's come over to the inspector. Let's change the shape to line. And if we turn on our just item tool here and come to show overlays. We can grab these points here and bring it down so that our emitter begins here at the bottom of our text. So you'll see that those particles are emitting from that line now. The next thing we want to do though is we want to reduce the emission range because we only want them going pretty much upwards but with a slight variation so I'm going to set that to 10 and you'll notice the particles are going down so we need to flop the emission angle so all we need to do is enter a value of 180 for that and those particles will move upwards let's increase the birth rate to say 50 let's set a bit of birth rate randomness let us also increase the speed up to about 300 Let's increase the speed randomness to 100, maybe. And obviously our scale is much too big. So let's reduce that down to 50. And let's increase the scale randomness to 25. So we get something like that. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that my particle is upside down. And we can fix that by just changing the angle here to 180. And now those particles are going up, that's a bit more plausible. OK, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. You can finesse this in all sorts of different ways and you can add extra droplets if you fancy. Typically what I'm also going to do is I'm going to come and make those a little bit narrower. So I'm going to reduce my X scale to 25 maybe. I mean, that's a bit too much. Maybe 35 is good. There you go. OK, I'm happy with that. I'm going to call this group Displace. And then I'm going to come to my Artwork group and I'm going to come to Filters and I'm going to look for Distortion and I'm going to grab Glass Distortion. Now what I can do is I can take my Displace group and drag it into that input here. Now I'm going to increase the softness all the way up to five. And what we do want to do is we want to turn off that displace group because we don't want to see it. So I've deliberately done this wrong so you can see what's happening. Let's zoom out a bit. As you can see, those droplets are not doing anything like what they should be doing. And there's two reasons for that. The first is down to our fixed resolution issue. So if we turn that on in this displace group, things will already start to look better. You'll see that instead of those droplets filling the screen and, and just, just behaving in a way that we don't want, we can calm that down by turning on fixed resolution. 
So that's already better, but it's still not right. And that's because we need to do one other thing to this group here, and that's to add a background solid. And without the background solid, it's not going to work. So I've just literally added a background solid there. I'm going to send it to the back. It doesn't actually matter what color it is too much as long as it's not white, but I'm going to make it black. So if we turn that group back on again, you'll see that we now have something that looks like that. Turn it off again. And now you'll see our particles are behaving exactly as we want them to. So what this background solid is doing, it's helping that group become stable. Whereas the, if we turn it off, our particle system is filling the, the frame and it's, it's in, in terms of this uh, glass distortion here and that's not what we want. So it, get, it all gets a bit confusing. Whereas as soon as we turn that on, it's all under control. I'm just gonna do something else, which is to take my poster artwork. I'm going to duplicate it. So right click, duplicate. I'm going to apply my glass distortion directly to that bottom layer. And to the top layer, I'm going to add distortion bump map. And again, I'm going to use that displace group to add to the bump map. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this layer here to darken. And what that does is we zoom in a bit more. I turn that on and off and then we reduce the level of that. You can see I'm getting some nice shading in there. So that's with it completely off. And if we turn it on, if we bring it up a bit, we get some slightly more interesting shading on those droplets. Now you're probably noticing that the edges of this are a little bit ragged. And that's because we need to adjust the glass distortion amount a little bit. It's that default value of 110 gives some pretty sharp edges. Uh, and we just need to turn that down a bit. So if we come down to around 70 or so. That's actually working better. And we can even just dial back the, the mix value. And we get something that's a little bit more subtle. Obviously those bubbles are going at quite a rate, so we won't really see that. And you know, if we really wanted to, we could turn on motion blur. That's probably too much. That default motion blur is always a bit too much in my view. You need to generally come down to around 90 on motion blur, rather than that 360 shutter angle. And it gives us a much better effect. And you see with that on, we've really lost all that, all those jagged edges. Anyway, I hope that's been useful. So a couple of things to remember there, the importance of fixed resolution in this context. And the other thing that you need to factor in is to add that color solid so that that displace group with its emitter doesn't misbehave. Just remind ourselves of what that's doing. You can see without that color solid, it's all going a little bit crazy, especially at the beginning there where there aren't enough particles it sort of suddenly decides that it wants to try and fill the frame with the couple of particles that it's already got. But as soon as we turn that on, everything is good. Okay, so there you go. Thanks very much for watching. I hope to see you again another time.